quiz, 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 quiz. Okay, Friday is here, and that means time for our weekly RFL current events quiz. Uh, we will go to the phone lines right now, and if you haven't joined us, you see the number on your screen. Now, if you answer our question correctly, stay on the line. We'll get your contact information, and we'll send you one of these. You want to hold it up, Dom, like Vanna White here? Do I get the smile like Vanna? Ah, uh, well, you got a lot of things <laughs> like that. All right, thank That's you very much. All right, let's get to our first question. It's uh, going to start off in Newburgh. We got Donald on the line. Donald, can you hear me all right? Yes. All right. This one coming out of uh, New York, in fact, out of Albany, not that far from you, Donald. This made headlines, especially given what's going on with the State Department's uh, and Hillary's emails. There's an email question as well going on at the State Capitol. If we can bring down the banner so you can see all those choices, guys. How many days will New York State Agency have to purge their emails? Do, will they get rid of it in a year? Will they do it in 40 days? Will they get three months? How long until they gotta, until they'll get rid of their emails? And a lot of people are saying, time out here. What if we gotta get a hold of this stuff? What do you think the answer is? Uh, see, nine days. Look at you. Who's smarter than you, Donna? Yes. Than you, Donna. Um, the answer is 90 days. And, and Andrew, um, there's been some pushback because some people say, time out. If there's an investigation, we gotta go back and retrieve some of the information. Why are we doing this? Uh, the governor's office says this is just for, you know, efficiency purposes, et cetera. I, I, I'm, I go back through my work email, and there's stuff that I'm looking for that's 90 days old or, or longer than that. Dominic has gone 90 days without finding his car keys. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not sure that, that having that stuff available. I mean, you've got to figure out that you need to sue the, the, the state government or file a, an information request, and you better do it within 90 days because all of a sudden the record's gone. And it doesn't seem like good governance. After, obviously, all the Moreland stuff, people... Uh, they say even if it's not connecting two and two, people believe there's a connection. And you know what's interesting, Richard? The governor talks a good game of ethics reform, well, transparency, yeah. and transparency, and then he does this. But what's also interesting, notice with elected officials, they never make these types of announcements before the election. They do it after the election. Hey, you can call them a lot shocking. of things, but dumb ain't one of them. All right. Uh, okay. Our next call goes to Philip, who's calling us from East Hanover, East Hanover, excuse me, in New Jersey. Philip, you there? Yes, sir. All right. Terrific. Thank you for joining us, by the way. Okay. It's an anniversary. In fact, uh, this week here, and here's the question. In fact, today is the anniversary. How many years ago um, or even what year was it that Walter Cronkite signed off from the CBS Evening News? Uh, on this night, X years ago, on this year, what, was the, what year was it that Walter Cronkite, uh, the voice of God, if you will, from the anchor desk, gave his final sign-off? I'm going to guess that'd be... I am sorry, my friend. Good try, Philip. The answer was 1981. And if uh, you put it in context, Matthew, look at some of the stories we've seen here from Brian Williams inflating his war experiences, Bill O'Reilly, uh, a, a very interesting uh, recollection of, of the events that were going on in the Falkland Islands. And hey, um, just for people, if you want a little walk down memory lane, this was part of Walter Cronkite's final broadcast. And that's the way it is. Friday, March 6th, 1981. I'll be away on assignment, and Dan Rather will be sitting in here for the next few years. Good night. No fanfare, no goodbye. There would have been today, the whole broadcast would have just been, you know, this thing, and they'd be rubbing their chins. And I, I remember watching him when he came back as a correspondent on a black and white TV bungee corded in the dairy barn that I grew up in milking cows. <laughs> if you can believe that. It's... <laughs> Didn't know you were going there with yeah, that here, yeah, but in our business, right, you don't see that anymore. You don't see the humility anymore. You know, I mean, this is the guy who virtually ended the Vietnam War, if you think about amazing. it. It's yeah. amazing. Even just that final clip where you see him say goodbye, it's so Spartan compared to the stuff that we see on the news today, or, or even as fancy as this set is. A lot more bells and whistles today and a lot less trust and a lot less, you know, I think You can't do it anymore. It. I mean, there are no more voices of God anymore. It's not, there's too many channels, there's too Dominic. many options. Hey, you know, you got Dominic. But, <laughs> but no, Richard but, French. Yeah, I know, I tried. <laughs> but, but you know what I'm saying. It, it's not just that the guys can't, you know, carry their coat, the, the Giants, the Morrows, or the Cronkites. It's a different world. But still, 
It felt different when he said it than when some of the guys say it today. It's a completely different world. And let's not forget, there are more venues now, notably called the internet. Yes. And everybody, depending on their politics, has their own news as well. All right. Let's go next uh, to Jack. Uh, Jack's calling us from Brooklyn. Jack, I'm going to ask you a question uh, across the river there in Jersey. And here goes. Former New Jersey officials wanted to settle with Exxon. They had a case going for 8.9 billion. That's B uh, billion with a B here. 8.9 billion dollars. They did settle, however. Um, but the question is, for how much? How much has Exxon agreed to pay in damage damages? A settlement that the uh, governor agreed to and is now defending. Come close to it. Um, and I'll uh, cut you some slack here. Go ahead, Jack. What, what would your guess be? Yeah, I think that was more like $2.9 million. It was very low compared to what the, uh, what the settlement was. Even with a curve, I can't go that low. But $225 million, $50 million, Andrew, was actually going to be discretionary on the part of the governor as to where to put it to towards a fund. A lot of people said, this is a, a bad deal. You got less than three cents on a dollar of the deal. And more than that, um, could there be some political motivations? Well, a lot of people are suggesting that the governor wants to inject that money into the into the state fund, into the budget, uh, because he's got a shortfall. They just had a judge rule against him a whole on, lot pension more than that. <laughs> on pension payment. And, you know, he gets to use that money and offset some problems that he has in the short term as opposed to waiting around for appeal after appeal after appeal, and the state might not mm. get the money for God knows how long. All right. Uh, let's uh, stay in Kings County. We've got Tim calling us from Brooklyn. Tim, you there? Tim's daughter, Catherine, but he left, but I'm ready to answer the question. Uh, yeah, it's cute here. I'm gonna, uh, you like basketball? Yeah. Okay. This is... So I think it's going to be before your time here. I'll throw it out here, okay? Um, a former New York Nick, as well as a guy who grew up in the city, in fact, in another borough from you in Queens. Unfortunately, he died this week here. It was a big heart attack, uh, in fact, last week, and they just had a memorial for him. Which New York Nick? He was a tough guy, but he was really liked by the fans. Um, who, um, who just passed away? Anthony Mason. And if you didn't wow. get help from the background, and that's okay if you did, that's wow. right. Give the young lady a mug here. Anthony Mason Mace. Remember him? Mm -hmm. uh, he was the heart and soul of the uh, New York Knicks under Pat Riley. He's, you know, he, he, under the basket, play tough, no easy layups. It was him and uh, Pat Ewing and who was the Oakley, other guy? Oakley, don't forget Oakley. Oakley. That's right, Charles No, but look Oakley. at him. I mean, he was a Queens guy. Um, and, and and he also could he had a handle too for a yes. really big guy. A lot of times he'd be the guy breaking the press or bringing the ball up court here. So uh, he was part of those teams when the Knicks weren't awful. I'm but so Richard, I'm, I'm more impressed with the young lady. They got the. I'm so yeah. glad right. she got this right. I felt terrible when I looked at the like how old the question was and the nature oh, of it. But. Andrew totally abandoned me on this one. He was like, oh god, you're gonna talk about <laughs> a guy who died. Nice. All right, let's go really quickly here. Um, and our next caller, why don't we go to? Uh, Let's go to Ethel. She's calling us from New Jersey. Ethel, um, which likely presidential candidate said the following this week? I'm not my father or my brother. I'm my own man. Likely own presidential man. candidate. Who do you think said that this week? Say it again. Right on your screen. A likely presidential candidate, when asked about his uh, brother's positions on things said, hey, I'm not my father, I'm not my brother, I'm my own man. Who do you think that is? Come on, uh, you can get it. No, no. Let me ask the same question to John calling us from Freehold. John, you're on the line. What do you think the answer is? Oh, I think it's uh, Jed Bush. You got it, my yeah, friend. Very good nice. Talk. Good talk. Uh, yeah, and uh, John, stay on the line and uh, they'll get your information. You think it's going to work, whether it's him on his side or Hillary on the other <laughs> side? Is it enough to say we're our own person? Do you think uh, they're going to run to the legacies of the family or run away from it? I'll tell you what's going to work for Jeb is all the money that he's raising. He is outpacing everybody on the Republican side. He's turning money away now because he doesn't want to be seen as the guy who's getting $100 million donations or whatever to his PAC. So um, I, I, it really bothers me to have a Bush-Clinton matchup, but I think that's where we're headed. I need those friends, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, no, please don't write me that next $100 million <laughs> All right, everybody, stay with us. RFL back on the other side. Stay with us.